Hello everybody and welcome back to another plant commentary of Outer The Last Airbender Season 3 Episode 2 Uh, The Headband That has a quite a lot of significance So I heard from the comments of the previous episodes And like, yeah, previous episodes Even from the beginning of, s or the end of the Season 2 That these next 5 episodes or so will be rather device uh, or they rather they are divisive amongst uh, Avatar fans. So we'll see how I think about them. Um, probably I'll take the middle ground, very likely, since I'm such a freaking pacifistic guy who doesn't ever show his opinion if it's negative. I mean, I will, but yeah. Um, so we'll see how I feel about, feel about this. Um, I had to say something about the last episode, but I forgot. Um, it. Oh yeah, it was full of cliches, but um, those cliches are something that I can tolerate personally, even though they are, technically speaking, too much in your face. Like that, like the line that Aang said, that I have to regain my honor, and that was very much on the nose. And the show would have been just blatantly better if that would have been removed, but I can personally tolerate that. I understand why some people wouldn't. Whatever, let's get on with the actual episode of today. And here we go. So, I do quite wonder how this... How the episode will bad. I'm expecting many things. And I hope at least, at least some of them get addressed. So, yeah. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. Hmm. When the world needed him most, he vanished. I actually wonder about Roku. Past, like, could he have actu actually had a chance to and stop the war? His because he implied he that he had. I just wonder, like... But I, I wonder, like, can save what he could have done. I also, like... <sighs> I haven't mentioned this a lot, but... Oh, I have mentioned this often, but... I very much enjoy the whole thing of Avatar's past life and conversing with them. Now I'll be sickened for a second. Loyalty was tested by your um... Treacherous uncle. You did the right thing to capture the traitor. Okay. Why did you tell father that I was the one who killed the Avatar? Please, Zuko. <laughs> what ulterior motive could I have? Unless, somehow, the Avatar was actually alive. All that glory would suddenly turn to shame. That's such a catch 20. 22. I said that wrong in the previous episode. I called it catch 2020, even though it was catch 22. Whatever. At least I think I called it wrong. But yeah, it's a catch 22. It's that's such that's such an amazing plan. I just really freaked out over how great that was. I realize I have been kind of overreacting in the in these episodes, but I was I was maybe a bit too excited, but I don't think I was overreacting, I was just very, very excited about it. Also, where is Suko going now? So yes, even I can get excited. Because that's more interesting to watch, rather than just being passive. Who's there? Hmm. What? Oh, that's the prison! I think. He was going there to wonder if he could go I see his see uncle. Shh. Keep quiet. Interesting. Whoa! Great job Ooh, that's with the cloud camo, but next time, let's disguise ourselves as the kind of cloud who knows how to keep its mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want a bird to hear us chatting up there and turn us in. That's hey, cool. We're an enemy that turn. cloud is very cool. Those are enemy birds. <laughs> that was a pretty cool disguise. Actually, they use dust, so whatever you can do that with her, and never mind. It's not too much one th thing. Well, this is it. This is how we'll be living until the invasion begins. Hiding in cave after cave after cave after cave. Sokka, we don't need to become cave people. What we need <laughs> is some new clothes. Cave people. Yeah. Blending in is better than hiding out. If we get Fire Nation disguises, we'll be just as safe as we would be hiding in a cave. Plus, they have real food out there. <laughs> Does anyone want to sit in the dirt and eat cave hoppers? Interesting. Looks like we got outvoted, sport. Let's get some new clothes. I don't know about this. These clothes 
belong to somebody. Oh, Michael steal. Silk robe. Why did you yell? But if it's essential to our survival, then I call the suit. <laughs> Oh, this is just. Ta -da! Hey, hmm. that looks actually pretty good. Probably shoes, but then he won't be able to see as well. Sorry, shoes. I. Finally, a stylish shoe for the blind earth bender. How do I look? Um, I actually want to do a. Mom's necklace. Oh, oh yeah. I guess it's pretty obvious in the water hmm. tribe, isn't it? I kind of want to like do some analysis on the on their clothing and how that is related to real world co clothing. That would be quite interesting to see that comparison. <laughs> I used to visit my friend Kuzan here a hundred years ago, so everyone just follow my lead and stay cool, or as they say in the Fire Nation, stay flaming. Oh boy. Greetings, my good Hotman. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, he's like hundred years old, so that's like. Oh, he has no idea. Place? Come on, Aang. Everyone here eats meat, even the meat. <laughs> even the meat eats meat. You guys go ahead. I'll just get some lettuce out of the garbage. Hotman. Hmm. Hotman. 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 That's probably Hotman? an insult. It's over. We caught you. Who, me? It couldn't be more obvious that you don't belong here. Next time you play hooky, you might want to take off your school uniform. <laughs> ah! Hey, okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh. What a fun is this a new mine ready for molding? That's right. Let the molding begin. Wait a minute. You're not from the Fire Nation. Clearly, you're from the colonies. Yeah, the colonies, of course. The Fire Nation colonies in the Earth Kingdom. Your etiquette is terrible. In the homeland, we bow to our elders. Like so. Sorry, ma'am. And we don't wear head coverings <laughs> indoors. Um, I have a scar. It's really embarrassing. Very well. What is your name? Or should we just call you Mannerless Colony Slob? <laughs> just Slob is fine. Or, uh, Kuzan. I'm sorry, I can't comment on this. this I, I'm, <laughs> I, I actually find this quite intriguing. I do... I do quite enjoy this, actually. It's not we made it through the day, Momo. And it was pretty fun. It's not Don't that... let the headmaster catch you with that monkey. What monkey? Don't worry, I'm not a tattletale. My name's Anji. I like your headband, by the way. Anji, you don't have to babysit the new kid. Wow. You must be one of those popular kids I've been hearing about. That's <laughs> right. Now listen, friend. I know you're from the colonies, so I'll say this slowly. Anji is my girlfriend. Don't forget it. Okay. Hmm. It was nice meeting you. I don't believe it. He didn't beat you up. Not even a little. Guess I'm just lucky. We were on our way to play hide and explode. Interesting. This is actually... I don't know. I'm getting some regrets. This might be actually... <laughs> I don't know. I don't very much enjoy these, like... Slice of life yeah, school day thing is. I've been worried sick. I got invited to play with some kids after school. <laughs> after what? I enrolled in a Fire Nation school. And I'm going back tomorrow. Enrolled in what? Okay. Um, one of those girls, uh, looked like, um... You again. Who was that one girl who had crush on Ang? Prince Zuko. I'm going in for a visit. You're gonna stand guard here, and no one 
is going to know about this. Hmm. All right. Ira looks. Uncle. It's me. All right. Yes. Ang, I'm trying to be mature and not That's immediately shoot down your idea, but it sounds really terrible. Yeah, uh, we got our outfits. What do you need to go to school? Okay, whatever. I can't concentrate. Um, I, I mean, I can concentrate, but I want to talk about that little Zuko scene, like. That was quite interesting, seeing the confrontation, since Zuko now has betrayed everyone, at least once. Like, everybody. And especially someone so close to him, like, betraying his uncle, that's especially... That's almost patricide, I must say. There's a term for that, but I can't remember what it is. That's quite horrible. And we get to see that, like, from Iroh, how he reacts to that. That's interesting. Continuing. I'm still... I'm I can just classroom. talk about that later. About the Fire Nation. I already have a picture of Fire Lord Ozai. And here's one that I made out of noodles. Impressive, I admit. But I still think it's too dangerous. I guess we'll never find out about the Secret River, then. It goes right to the Fire Lord's palace. We were supposed to learn about it in class tomorrow. Hmm. I am a fan of secret rivers. <laughs> Fine, let's stay a few more days. Blame you, Hotman! No. Blame you? Mm hmm. That's. You brought so... this on yourself, you know. We could have returned together. You could have been a hero. You have no right to judge me, Uncle. I did what I had to do in Ba Sing Se, and you're a fool for not joining me. You're not going to say anything? You're a crazy old man! You're crazy! And if you weren't in jail, you'd be sleeping in a gutter! Good morning, class. I'll Is comment on that later. Oh. My life I gave to my country. With my hands I fight for Fire Lord. Fire Lord, Lord our forefathers. Our forefathers. With my mind I seek ways to better my country. And, and with my feet, mm -hmm. fire vendors. Fire Lord. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Since it's obviously hilarious to mock our national oath, we'll begin with a pop quiz on our great march of civilization. Aww. Interesting. Question one. What year did Fire Lord Sozin battle the Air Nation Army? Kuzon? Is that a trick question? The Air Nomads didn't have a formal military. Sozin defeated them by ambush. Well... I don't think you possibly know more than our national history book. Unless you were there a hundred years ago. I'll just write down my best guess. Interesting. So, they do, like, have some propaganda to their students. Even though that's very interesting. Who's on? I know. I'm a terrible Soongi Hornist. No, child. That hullabaloo going on with your feet. Is that a nervous disorder? I was just dancing. You do dances here in the homeland, right? Not really, no. Dancing is not conducive to a proper learning environment. Young people must have rigid discipline and order. But what about expressing yourself? I know sometimes we're so moved by our love for our nation that we can't control our own bodies. If you must, you may march in place quietly next time the urge hits you. Interesting, interesting. Oh, hi, Kuzan. I really like that crazy dance you were doing. Thanks, Anji. I could show it to you again if you'd like. Ah! What'd you say, Colony Trash? 
You're gonna show her something? Just some dance movements. Nobody shows <laughs> Nanji anything. I'll show you my dance moves. <laughs> oh, that's just hilarious. Some schoolboy thinks he can match up to the avatar. That's kind of funny. There's probably a hundred years experience difference between the two of you. And a lot more battle experience difference. That's quite hilarious. Now that that's kind of funny. Expectable, but quite funny. Picking fights on your second day? We need to have a conference to discuss your punishment. Bring your parents to my office after school. Parents? <laughs> but don't be late. And he'll run he'll have to run away. Probably, I guess. Thank you for coming, Mr. and Mrs. Or, you know. Fire! Wang fire! This is my wife, Sapphire! Sapphire Fire, nice to meet you. Mr. and Mrs. Fire, your son has been enrolled here for two days and he's already causing problems. He's argued with his history teacher, disrupted music class, and roughed up my star pupil. My goodness, that doesn't sound like our Kuzan. That's what any mother would say, ma'am. Nonetheless, you are forewarned. If he acts up one more time, I'll have him sent to reform school. By which I mean the coal mines. <laughs> are we clear? Don't you worry, Mr. Headmaster. I'll straighten this boy out something fierce. Young man, as soon as we get home, you're gonna get the punishment of a lifetime. That's what I like to hear. Hmm. Orange is such an awful color. <laughs> You're so beautiful when you hate the world. <laughs> I you, I don't hate you too. <laughs> <laughs> Zuko, oh, that's I have funny. a word with you. <clears throat> Can't you see we're uh. busy? Oh, May, Tai Li needs your help untangling her braids. Sounds pretty serious. So, I hear you've been to visit your Uncle Fatso in the prison tower. That guard told you. No, you did. Just now. <laughs> okay, you caught Clever. What Clever again. Clever as always. Nothing. Believe it or not, I'm looking out for you. <coughs> if people find out you've been to see Uncle, they'll think you're plotting with him. Just be careful, dum dum. Interesting. That is <coughs> no more school for you, young man. I'm not ready to leave. I'm having fun, fun for once. I'm just being a normal kid. You don't know what it's like, Sokka. You get to be normal all the time. <laughs> ha -ha. Listen, guys. Those kids at school are the future of the Fire Nation. If we want to change this place for the better, we need to show them a little taste of freedom. What could you possibly do for a country of depraved little fire monsters? I'm gonna throw them a secret dance party. Oh, so Sokka is racist. Sokka is just freaking racist. That's intriguing, I must say. I can't believe we're having a dance party. It's so silly. Don't think of it as a dance party, but as a cultural event celebrating the art of fancy football. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You should probably wait out back. Oh, boy. I know. You've got fancier feet than anybody. <laughs> and six of them. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen! The Flamios! Yeah. This ought to get everybody moving. What do we do? This is when you start dancing. I don't think my parents want me dancing in a cave. <laughs> yeah! What if someone finds out? Oh boy. Listen, guys. Dancing isn't something you think about. It's a form of self-expression that no one can ever take away from you. Maybe it was different in the colonies, Kuzan, but we don't do that here. Sure you do. You've had for generations. It just so happens that I know several classic Fire Nation dances. A hundred years ago, this was known as Phoenix Flight. Ooh, ooh, wow. And this was the Camelopin Strut. <laughs> oh, 
crazy. Who knew Twinkle Toes could dance? I brought you some Komodo chicken. That was fun. I know you don't care for it, but I figure it beats prison food. I admit it. I have everything I always wanted, but it's not at all how I thought it would be. The truth is, I need your advice. I think the Avatar is still alive. I know he's out there. I'm losing my mind. Please, Uncle, I'm so confused. I need your help. Forget it. I'll solve this myself. Waste away in here for all I care. Hmm. I don't know what knows what he's doing. He wants he wants like Ang to have like come to his I mean Suko come to his home. Oh. Wow, they look pretty good together. Eh, if that's what you like. Mm -hmm. Oh, Katara is yeah. jealous. That's it. That's the sound of happy feet. This is I like this. Th this is <laughs> oh freaking break dancing. Okay, break down. <laughs> oh, for goodness' sake, just break I down. I don't know, Aang. These shoes aren't really right for dancing, and I, I, I'm not sure that I know how to take my hand. Okay. Oh, isn't that from Water Drive, I get, think? That's from Water Drive, I, I believe. Oh, no, what? That's... Mm. Dang, everyone's That's watching. water bending, I guess. Don't worry about them. It's just you and me right now. <laughs> How romantic. Okay. Huh. I don't know why, but I... I'm always entranced by dancing, but... Oh my... It is a dancing party. You did the right thing by telling me, Hide. Anytime, Headmaster, sir. This is incredible. It's like my inhibitions just disappeared. <laughs> okay, you're back again. He's the one we want. The boy with the headband. Uh oh. <laughs> That's a pretty cool natural fire music. Looking for me? That's not the one. He's here somewhere. Don't let him leave the cave. I bet there's a hole on the other side. Yes. They gave those headbands to everybody. That's clever. Oh, that's. Yeah. Quite clever. Searching for someone? Who are you looking for? Do you need something? Oh, oh my. That's awesome. That was that was cool. That was oh god, that 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 was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're safe, Sokka. You can take off the mustache now. Oh, no, I can't. It's permanently glued to my skin. Way to go, Dancy Pants. I think you really did help those kids. Mm. You taught them to be free. I don't know. It was just a dance party, that's all. Well, that was some dance party, Ang. Play me, oh, sir. Play me, oh. 
Okay, okay. already made up my mind. I think this episode falls on the good side of the spectrum. It's definitely, it has a lot of good things I enjoyed. I thoroughly enjoyed every scene with Zuko. So I don't have to go over that a lot. Uh, on the other hand, the parts with Aang, or the Aang, the Aang gang, um, I did enjoy most of them, at least partially. And each of them had some good things. Um, a little background thing, I ha I do like, I am entranced by dancing. I have enjoyed dancing always. I have watched hundreds of ballets, for example, and all other... I just like dancing a lot. And I think it's a very, very beautiful form of e expression. So this very much, very well catered to my needs on that end, and I very much do like that. Now, the reason I did enjoy the Ang parts, or the Ang gang parts, mostly was because it showed us... <sighs> It showed us more of the culture of the Fire Nation, and I think that's a very, very interesting thing and very important because it builds a lot of the world, and we get to see a lot more. And from um, Ang's side, we actually get to see what Fire Nation was a hundred years ago, and that's also very interesting. I I do like how it shows the perspective um, between hundred years and now. So that's very cool. I very much enjoyed that. Now let's go through this by scene by scene. There will probably be quite a few scenes we'll be skipping. So let's go through this first. Okay, um, this was the flashback and yeah, the normal, they were just trying to infiltrate. Um, there was nothing. Converse, converse, converse. Whatever. Um, I had something to talk about this scene. In, like, about the school itself. Like, it is a very, very conservative, conservative school with very strict rules. And that is very, very reminiscent of both Korea and China. And partially about Japan. And how you're not supposed to express yourself there. And that's considered rude and impolite. You're not supposed to argue with your um, elders. At least... That's if my knowledge is correct. I might be completely mistaken on this, so please do apologize if I make some mistakes. I don't, haven't done my research yet. I'm a, I, I, this is one of the episodes I want to do. Uh, uh, I want to go over in more detail because this school system, in spe special, especially, reflects very much on the school systems of our world in some ways, especially on the part of hiding knowledge. Let's say. And they have just, they have just outright lies on their history books, apparently, which is, which makes sense, since it's such a um, totalitarian, totalitarian country. It makes a lot of sense that they want to misstrue some in information and want to portray it in a little different light, shall we say. Um, of course, that's no different from what every country does. War heroes are always, always glorified. Or not. They are always glorified, but not everybody glorifies them, shall we say, like that. And always, I have already mentioned this often, because they've mentioned about the war. I have said this previously, but I'm going to repeat this. Um, in war, there are no good guys, and everybody justifies their side of the war with spreading of, or, spreading or defending of good. The um, invaders justify their actions by telling that they are coming to free their people from the evil oppress oppressor lords and they will spread good to the country. And the defenders are saying that they will they are fighting against the evil that is coming from outside and protect the good people inside. So everybody thinks they are good, while nobody is good, perfectly at least. So that very much reflects upon the, how history is misrepresented almost universally. 
just because that's how just that's just about how the history is told in schools at least from my experiences like history always is represented that there are bad guys and good guys even though the smartest people realize that um, that's just basically just propaganda and yeah that's basically what is going on in here as well that's very interesting I'm going a bit more over analytical on this even here but whatever that's even though that feels a little more evil than it probably should it's not that miscorrect it's not that inaccurate from reality it's actually very close representative of certain parts um, however the, this was actually the part of the episode I did not enjoy that much school romances and dramas are well they, to say the least I do not enjoy them that much unless they have something special going on in them I very much dis dislike them and I did this one as well Luckily, though, they don't focus on that, so, at least, like, seriously that much. And this was mostly built up to the end. Okay, so, uh, whatever, whatever, this was about the school issue. And then, I'll just talk in general about this Zuko's confrontations with Iroh. Zuko is still trying to figure out what he wants to do. I believe he's not clear whether he should or should not kill the Avatar. Even though he already paid a mercenary for that. I'm quite certain that he still wants to save the Avatar. And in some ways he feels like it is the correct thing to do. Which it absolutely is. That he, I mean, saving Avatar and doing that. So he believes like, what they are, he, the, um, Iroh's teachings have really ingrained themselves onto him and he feels like what he is doing is morally, at the very least, questionable. Because murder always is. And I, it's very clear that he feels sorry for Iroh, but he is not ready to make amends yet. And he is, even though his lifestyle has changed once already, in the passing say, he is not ready to accept such a lifestyle completely yet, even though that he did for a for a while. But he wanted to betray Iroh's. He betrayed Iroh's trust here, but he wants to redeem it because he feels Iroh. Well, Iroh is an important part of his life. So we get to see it very well expressed here, and I like. I, I just. I like how silent and motionless Iroh is because that reflects very well on what humans actually would do in this situation and I do feel like he is doing it deliberately not because of emotions but because he knows that he Zuko needs to come to terms with his desires and his morals currently within within Zuko there are two walls and one is bad and one is good Positive neg emotions feed the good wolf, and the negative emotions feed the bad wolf. Oh, that's a really stupid. I you I think you all heard of that. I hope you've all heard of that um, saying. I guess whatever. Um, continuing on. Um, this was again the whole music scene was like, you're not supposed to like um, express yourself. That again reflects very well on certain parts of the world. And you are supposed to be conservative. But yeah, it's a little bit strenuous for, at, at the very least, children to stay put. And that's why it's not being used generally everywhere in the world because it does affect children's growth a, bit, a lot. And in a negative way as well. So yeah, I do very much enjoy that. But there are some useful things for it. Because one is it breeds discipline into the ranks of children. And the second it it breeds like the it breeds on the I cannot say it. I do not remember how to say that. Um they are diligent and disciplined and they are also um, controlled, shall we say. That sounded quite bad. Whatever. Um, this fight scene was... I, I, I want to say I enjoyed it. And I did. 
but upon reflection, it's actually very cliché. And, I mean, it's understandable in every regard. But, I don't know. It's just maybe a bit too much of a cliché. But it's pretty fun as, as well. Um, it shows that Aang didn't pl pl throw any punches, so that was fun. Um, this little romance scene, I do wonder, like, <laughs> that, that line, I do not hate you. <laughs> I'm, I feel like my, my, May, May, I don't know, I don't remember her name again, whatever, May, probably, whatever, that girl. Um, I feel like she's just flat out in love with Zuko, but I'm not so sure about Zuko. I think he is just trying to gather, trying to pull himself together while the use of endorphins and release of like just getting pleasure from being with her. I don't believe she he actually loves her. He probably likes her, possibly a lot. May okay, maybe he does love her, but I think he's just using her as an implement to make himself not feel as terrible about himself. That's what I feel like. I'm very certain that my will, may my whatever, will follow Zuko wherever he goes, if Zuko asks. So if Zuko ever comes to the good side. Probably my will as well. Maybe not immediately. Maybe they'll even clash at some point, but that's what I feel like. I might be horribly wrong. I don't even care. I am still quite certain that Zuko will eventually be a good guy because he has been made as the second protagonist and as the second side of Aang. So I think they will eventually come together. Oh god, that sounded awful. They will eventually don't Google Zuko X Aang. Um they will eventually join forces. I am quite certain of that. Just because Zuko has been shown having that much conflict. Although, if Zuko would be evil throughout the whole of the series, that would be quite incredible. Unfortunately, I don't think that will happen. But that would be quite incredible. The rest of the scenes, I do not have that much to comment on. Other than... I do enjoy that Aang showed them... Dances from variety of the world, uh, from everywhere around the world. Like, I am pretty certain that they had a lot of like they had from one dance from Balsing Say at least. So that's from Earth Kingdom. I'm certain that some of his moves were from um, Air Tribe because that's where he Air Nomads because that's where that's his na nationality. And that last one with uh, Katara, Katara, I was I'm quite certain that was just from Water Tribe. But I'm certain also that those dances that he showed in the beginning and what drew out were from like, um, excuse me, as I was saying, um, he showed a variety of dances and that one dance, those dances from the beginning and throughout the whole thing, I'm certain that those were from the Fire King, Fire Nation from like 100 years ago, which also very well represents how the um, nationality has changed. Or how the culture there has changed. Even in hundred years, that's quite a big, lot, big of big change. And I also like the idea of them bringing freedom and self-expression to the children, because that's definitely a way to. That's a non-aggressive way to. That's non-aggressive resistance, the main cause of pacifism or the main uh, act of pacifism. And I do very much enjoy that. Um, do I have anything else to say? I mean, I don't. This was also quite fun how we saw some solidarity between students in... I want to find this scene in particular here. Who are you looking for? Do you need something? Over here! This scene. Like, that showed a lot of solidarity that the students probably did not have before. And that's quite awesome in my opinion. That was really, really cool. Because that means that Aang has spread the idea of freedom into the children. And I believe the children are the future, so... Ergo, I very much like that idea. <sighs> then this last guy we saw. Gosh! He looks badass. Also, he looks Russian, but... Um, he looks pretty threatening. 
I don't quite like that. So, overall, I did enjoy the episode. Sure, there were things that were quite annoying, but luckily they didn't focus on them, such as the school aspect. And the romance that I handled this time around was quite good, and it was quite believable, those school, uh, that like little uh, side plot with the girl and Aang, that she had a small crush on Aang. Small, perhaps, or perhaps she was just showing favor to her, to him. Maybe because Aang was different. I don't know. So that was actually handled very, very maturely. As well as um, Zuko and Mai Mei, whatever. So I do like this episode overall, even though there were some things I did not enjoy very much. And I... It, it, it feels pretty good, actually. Like It, it feels like a good, scene, good episode, in my opinion. With those uh, things I said. On the other hand, I can totally understand why some people wouldn't like. If you do not enjoy dancing as much as I do, and you do not appreciate it as much as I do, which is admittedly I do <laughs> quite easy because I have a, um, quite a fascination on dancing, um, I can see why you wouldn't enjoy this episode. The last dancing scene totally uh, redeemed this episode for me, so... Even before that, it had some redeeming qualities, but I was leaning on the t st uh, side of neutrality. Now I'm pretty so much leaning that it's good, good episode all around, actually. Maybe if you would like some more action, you would be disappointed in this. But I didn't. I was not. I did enjoy this. It also possibly had enough humor to make it more Avatar-ish episode. So I did, uh, all around, I did enjoy this episode quite a bit. So, without further ado, I want to know your opinions about this episode, because this has been apparently a divisive episode. I want to know, do you like this episode or do you not? And why would you, why do you or do you not enjoy it? The, especially the explanations, so those are quite important. I, I, I want to know your opinions, like your reasons for not liking it. Maybe, just like, if you say that something just rubs you the wrong way, that's completely understandable. Like, there are definitely things here that even rub me the wrong way, so I can totally relate to that. So, I uh, thank you all for watching. It has been a pleasure, as usual. So, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next episode. Gonna move out.